Hello, I'm your host, Alex Freeberg, and this is the Alex the Analyst Show. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are discussing no-code analytics. What on earth is no-code analytics? Should I be worried? Why do I keep seeing advertisements on every social media platform about no-code analytics? We are going to be discussing this today, uh, going, you know, hopefully a little bit in-depth about this topic. What is it? Uh, you know, is this for you? Is this something that you should be interested in? Should you, you be worried? Um, and then we have some other really good segments at the end. I hope you stick around for that. So let's jump right into it to answer the question that we all want to know. What, what is no-code analytics? I'm trying to see how many times I can say no-code analytics within the first minute of this video. Uh, so far, it's a lot. So what it does is theoretically, uh, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to allow you to build an entire ETL pipeline pipeline, um, gather, you know, your insights, create dashboards and automate this whole process and do it in a unique way. Um, from what I've seen just right off the bat, we'll get into some better examples, more specific examples. It looks to me like it's just kind of a fancy different way of automating, you know, certain features of, of everything, right? You're automating some of the e ETL stuff. There's apps for that. You're automating some of the visualization stuff, apps for that, and you're automating sending it out and doing all the stuff. There's apps for that. So it's kind of trying to combine everything almost into one platform in a sense and do all the work for you so you don't need developers, you don't need um, data architects, all of these things. It's trying to really um, mostly be a solution for small companies. Small to medium companies is kind of what it's targeted at. It's not for big companies because um, I think there's just a lot more complexity in that. So is definitely targeted towards smaller, smaller to medium sized companies and like startups, really. Um, I'm gonna pull up some stuff really quick. Uh, <laughs> has anyone seen the advertisement that has been going around for Bubble? Um, it, it, it boasts that you can build a world class web app in days, no experience required. And the advertisement, the one that I, I laugh at every single time I see it, the caption is, I'm a CTO and I don't know how to code. And in the comment section, it's just a bunch of programmers and developers who are literally just roasting this guy. And every time I look at it, I, every time I see that thing, I always go into the comments and read, or I always go to the comment section and read those comments because they're just roasting this guy. And it's so funny to me. And I totally get it. Um, you know, it's, it's just so pompous um, to be like, I'm a CTO and I don't know how to do any of this stuff. When there's people who are like absolute experts at this and could probably be a lot more beneficial, but you know, maybe he has like a business background or, or some type of technical background, but it's just super ironic, right? And, and the whole idea of it is um, kind of saying, you know, we don't really need developers anymore. We've automated this process. We don't, you don't need them with this. And so it's just really, really interesting. Um, I'm going to go to this thing. It's called Quirvy. Now, Quirvy is a no-code analytics platform. Never heard of them before I started doing this research. Uh, you know, none of that. But they give a kind of a good description of what no-code analytics is. And I want to read that to you. It says, um, this is way down in the in the um in the article. And I and I'm gonna, if I can remember, I'm gonna link all these articles below just so you can read them. But this website says. Analytic apps are built around the same charts, reports, metrics, and dashboards that you already know, only now they're wrapped inside a modern application framework that offers powerful features like automation and information distribution along with data collection and security. So real quick, all that really told us is you're getting a lot of the things that you're already getting, but we're going to automate it and we're going to distribute that information. Now it talks a little bit more about that. Um, and what they do is they create custom URLs that instead of having to, for you to go and pull up the report and actually look at it and run the report, I mean, which can take God, half a minute, it saves you all that time by sending you a link. And so you can just click on that link, it brings you to it and it pulls up all the information. So, you know, it saves you a little bit of time. To be fair, could be very valuable to some people who don't have the tech savvy to go into a dashboard and pull it up yourself. Um, I want to read the next one 
because it's also super interesting. The whole article was super interesting. I rolled my eyes a few times. Um, this one kind of made me roll my eyes. And so I'm just going to read it. But, and this is literally the next, uh, the next paragraph. It says, but even in analytic apps are not enough for today's business world if they require a fleet of developers and tons of time and money to develop and maintain. So true, I've been there. That's why Corby has pioneered the no-code analytic app. Complete analytic solutions that can be built and maintained by average business users. You don't need anyone who knows anything about what they're doing. An average business user. That's all you need. Um, what are my thoughts on this? Here's my initial thoughts. Um, I'm going to give you an example. And this isn't my entire belief. But I think it's a pretty good representation of how I feel. Let's take, for example, and this may or may not be 100% true, but you, I, you know, let's say, for example, a, 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 a father takes his son, they go into the kitchen, they start baking a pie. Now that kid, he's like two years old. And he's just doing whatever, not really paying attention, almost making things worse. Uh, and the dad is doing 95% of the work. Bakes the pie, or not bakes the pie, but gets all the ingredients ready. Gets to the very end and says, hey son, come over here and help me put the crust on. The son helps put the crust on. He watches his dad put it in the oven. And when it's done, the dad gives him a hug and says, you're a chef, my friend. You're a chef, son. Now, is that child actually a chef? No. Does that son know what he's really doing? No. But is the pie made? Yes. But it was done 95% by the father. If you understood why that analogy applies to this, um, it, that's basically how I feel about it. I think that, you know, you need to know about what you're doing in order to really make this work. And I'm sure, and I and I maybe I'll show um a link, or or no, I'll probably show a video. Or, what am I even saying? Um, I'll show you the di this diagram, and I'm gonna try to pull it up real quick. Give me a second. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. This is the one I'm looking for. I just found it. It's on Bubble. Bubble is that app, that advertisement app. It has this display of how you build it out. And there are things like design, workflow, data, styles, plugins, settings, and logs. Those are all the options that are available to you. And it's literally like a Tableau style where you drag and drop things into place. Um, I, I mean, I like the idea. I really do. I like the idea. I understand the concept. Um, and I think for small companies, this may be very useful. Now, will this replace a data analyst? No, this will not replace data analytics. This will not replace this will not replace developers, data analytics, anything at scale. For small companies, they might save money, and this might be useful to them, and they might not have to buy developer or you know, per, you know buy developers, um, you know, hire developers to do this work, where they may have in the future. So it may save companies money. But at established companies, they will never use these things. Um, and, and I'll kind of go into why. Complex data, data that is dirty and messy and all of and everything that goes along with that will never work in these systems ever. And if you try to use them in these systems, it will never work. The kind of data that's going to be useful in this um, are probably coming out of like CRM systems. Uh, online based data collection systems that are automated. So, you know, if you um, go and log in to a, to a online web store and they store your data, those are absolutes and they don't, they don't, the, the data typically does not get messed up. So the data is pretty clean. It's about as clean as you're probably going to get. If you're working with any type of, you know, system that could have potentially dirty data, this will not work. So that's why these small startups and these um, small companies, it might be useful to them um, because it takes away the hassle of having to hire somebody and do all that work and, and set up your user interface on the front end as well as you know, build the workflows and the data and all that stuff. So, you know, I go back to will this replace data analysts? No, this won't replace data analysts. And here's why. The first thing is, is this is not data analyst work. This is like, you know, a ton of different jobs put into one, done 
effectively if all the conditions are correct. So for developers, you're probably not going to be missing out on a ton of jobs. For uh, analysts and architects, you're probably not missing out on a lot of jobs. These are probably places that weren't going to hire analysts and developers anyways. These are small companies like that. Um, also, data analysts do not only do data visualizations. That is, and I've said it before, 5 to 10%. Uh, no, that's not true. Like 10 to 20% typically of, of, of somebody's job as an analyst. A lot of it is data cleaning, creating business rules, ETL process, um, and you know, finding the insights. Now, it is possible that this, I know I haven't, I've looked into it a little bit and some of these options do help with insights. Like you type in, you know, or you say, I, you know, here are the data points that I want to look at and give me insights into that data. And they automatically take that data and give you insights into it. Maybe useful, maybe not, but one or two might be perfect for you. You click on those and you have those and you can have it refresh the data and send you that report every single morning. Not something that is unique to this. I could do that myself now. If I wanted to, I could do this exact same thing within Tableau and SQL. Um, and it's not crazy hard, right? It is a little bit different in the fact that the person doesn't get a URL sent to them like these people are saying that, that they do. You have to go and check it yourself. It doesn't save you that much time. So, um, you know, it, it's just a very interesting concept. Now, I have seen other analytics channels cover this topic. And, you know, I think for the most part, what people have said is pretty accurate. And I watched some of these videos because I didn't want to be this uneducated person coming on, you know, my show and saying things that just weren't very accurate or that nobody else agreed with. Um, not that I would change my opinion if somebody said it differently. This is my show. I can say whatever I want. But I will say that most of what they said was was what I agreed with and what I thought as well, which is this might be good for a small company. But once you get into it, the more advanced things, um, this probably will, you'll have to, ha you know, there's plugins that you can add. You'll probably have to start using those plugins. You'll probably have to use some external stuff to get the data cleaner or, 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 you know, um, for the mo more advanced things that you want to do with your data, this might not work. So it's just, it's just, it was such, it's such a hot topic to me because I, I kept seeing it everywhere. Um, advertisements I'm seeing. Um, people, a few people put out videos for it. I'm, and I'm watching these videos and I'm seeing it on Twitter and I'm seeing it. Like, I have to talk about this. The people need to know. Are people losing jobs over this? They're not. And I just really want to stress to everyone who thought I was kidding earlier, please, if you see the bubble guy, check out the comments. It is so funny. I crack up laughing every single time. I am not even joking about that. Um, so that's my, th those are really my thoughts. I don't, I don't even think I can go too much more in depth on that. Um, I don't want to pull up like the actual website and walk you through it. It's just not worth it. And for all the people on here who are probably watching this are people who are either wanting to get into analytics or are analysts themselves. Um, and so I'm just wanting to encourage you that this should not be anything that is discouraging to you. Maybe in 10 years, they just make crazy advancements to this and have like data clean, automated data cleaning and automated like everything. That's everything we do. It's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Well, um, but that might be something down the road that I need to revisit. So I just want to reassure you that if that's something that you were worried about and you're watching this, I don't want you to be worried. It's not something you should be concerned about. The well, one second, I was going to go off on a different tangent, but I want to say real quick, thank you to all the amazing, incredible, fantastic, beautiful, lovely people over on Patreon who are supporting this channel, who are supporting this video series specifically, this show, uh, because they are making this possible. And so if you want to support the channel, if you want to feed Max, who's sleeping right next to me, he's just so happy because he's been getting fed lately. Thanks to the people over at Patreon. And I asked the beautiful people over at Patreon what they wanted me to do in this episode or in the show. And they voted for me to talk about a funny story. Um, and what's funnier than tattoos? So I'm going to tell you about my one and only tattoo that I got, why I got it, um, 
it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be fun. You'll get to know me. I don't think, I don't think anybody uh, here knows that I have a tattoo. So if you're listening to this, you are exclusively amongst the people who are subscribed and watch my channel. Uh, you are exclusively the people who now know that I have a tattoo. That is a fact. Um, so I'm going to tell you about <laughs> kind of why I got a tattoo many, 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 many years ago. I owned a granola company. I started it with my friend, uh, still one of my very good friends. And um, one of our, our logo was a bear. Remember that for later. Uh, and it was just a really cool logo. Love the logo. We ran it for a while. I got out of it. He stayed in it. Then he passed it along to his friend. They, it's still up and running. Not going to give you the name of it. Um, but, you know, the logo was not only cool, it had a lot of sentimental value to me. Um, and the reason behind it was because a few years ago, um, you know, I went hiking with some of my friends. Uh, we went, we slept, we hung the bear trap like we always do. Yet we woke up one morning to a bear attacking our bear trap. And when I woke up, I woke up all the others. And I was like, guys, guys, there is a bear. There is a bear right there. I was like, shh, walk back. I hope you can hear me. I'm really close to the mic. Like, walk back. So I start whispering at him. And then we start walking back. And the bear looks at us and starts walking towards us. I I sprint. I had, I totally panicked. And we all just started sprinting as fast as we possibly could. For like 10 minutes straight, nobody was looking back. Nobody was checking. 99% sure that that bear didn't chase us at all. But when we got back home we told everyone that it was chasing us that we escaped death near near imminent death um just making sure my time because i don't the story who knows how long the story is going near imminent death and the story just kept evolving from there you know you know he got he got my shoe chased us into a river um you know we tossed him a salmon who knows it just it, it evolved from there and so then i i i even more formed uh, a, a bear connection. And so I was in college um, making some of the worst decisions of my life, to be honest. And one of those decisions was this tattoo. And I decided to not get a small tattoo. I got a big tattoo on my ribs right here. Um, and it is it has that logo as well as some of the forests, uh, some of the trails that I used to hike um, and the, the mountains that I used to go on. And I... I personally really like it, but who knows if you like it? Um, maybe it is a terrible tattoo and it's one of those like bear tattoos that's like on the worst tattoo list and people make fun of it. You won't know. Um, maybe, just maybe, if I get to like 100,000 subscribers, I will show you that tattoo. Maybe. Um, that might be like some super big, <laughs> super big push to get me, my subscribers just like skyrocket it in like a week. If I start, if I start telling people, I'll show, <laughs> I'll show them my tattoo. So that's my story. I think it's a really funny story. My wife really likes the tattoo. That's all that matters. My kids like it. Um, you know, I call my family the Bear Family, um, and and you know, it's just a it's just a running joke, and it's fun, and I like it. I personally like it a lot. Um, so that's my funny story for today. You know, I'm curious as to what you think about it, what you think it looks like. Uh, <laughs> that'll be interesting uh, to hear in the comments, I'm sure. Now we have the next segment of our show, which is the comment or question of the week. That comes from Bala Samer. I'm going to tell him how I'm going to say it. And he said, what about Udacity's nanodegree program? What about Udacity's nanodegree program? What about it? We're all asking the same thing, man. Here's my thoughts on Udacity's nano degree program is that one, it's, it is, it's, I, and, and to be fair, I have looked into it. I know what the course goes through. I, and they have a business analyst one, I believe, and a data analyst one. So, but I've looked at both. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. Do not look this up. Please. The information that they go through in that course that I'm specifically remembering is on there, whichever one it is, whether it says data analyst or business analyst, the, the information in there is good, right? It goes through, I believe, SQL, Tableau, Excel, and I may go through Python off the top of my head. I can't remember. I should, I probably should have pulled this up beforehand to sound more educated on it. But 
my thoughts are it is pretty expensive. It's like 3000 bucks or 2300 or if you pay it all up front, it's like 2000 and they have all the way, you know, you can finance it. Here's my, my end thoughts on it is it's expensive. It's a lot of the information that you can learn elsewhere. A nano degree does not have a lot of weight to it. I don't go see a nano degree and I'm like, man, this guy, he's got a nano degree. It's basically like a master's degree, but in a nano form. So, um, you know, I don't recommend it. I don't think it's worth it unless you can get some really good discount. I don't think it's worth it. Um, if you could pay maybe like 600 bucks for it, I bet it would be worth it but it's a lot more expensive than that. So I, I would say no, I don't recommend it. I don't think it's um, anything super special. And, um, you know, that's my overall thoughts. We are coming to a close in this fantastic episode. Something that I like uh, to do at the end of every episode is have some type of keyword, something to show that, that, something that you can put in the comments to show that you made it to the end, you watched all of this, you were engaged, you were intrigued, you care You care about me, you care about the show, you care about no-code analytics and your career and your future. And so the key word today, sticking with theme, vegetable-based, and I want to, before I say what it is, do not look up how to spell this. That is against the rules. Do not look up how to spell this word. And if it autocorrects, if it autocorrects you, you cannot autocorrect it back. Whatever, you, however you spell it, you have to keep it and put that in the, in the, in the uh, comments below. The keyword today to type in the comments to show that you care about me and the show is rutabaga. I have no idea how to spell that word, but I really want to, I'm really interested in how you spell it. So do not look it up. Do not use the autocorrect that comes with YouTube comment section. Just type it in there. Whatever comes up, comes up. And we'll all know what you're talking about. And we'll all laugh together. That's our show. I hope it was good. I hope you found it useful. Thank you guys so much. You guys are fantastic. I wish you a wonderful week, a wonderful month. The holidays are around the corner. Um, I mean, they're, they're coming up. They're really close. So I hope you guys have a, a fantastic time. Be safe, be healthy, uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.